How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So you probably maybe got a glimmer at our previous episode talking about Michael Lorenzen and why we do not want him. We were talking about potential supplements for Garrett Cole. Can't replace him. Um, you can try to replace his leg, but you can't replace his arm. Um, I do believe right now there is growing optimism. At least there's a new report that just dropped that we avoided the worst case scenario. Now they're doing more testing. It seems this, this is fueled by Garrett Cole, wants to get to the bottom of what is causing this elbow discomfort. But according to all the different opinions that the Yankees have gotten on his elbow, we're talking about the best doctors around, um, except for the one top doctor, which Cole is currently traveling to LA to actually get uh, further imaging and further testing done to make sure that this is confirmed, that he does not have a tear in his UCL. That is the best case scenario. Right now, they're saying he's going to be shut down for one to two months, and then he'll have to ramp up, most likely um, in AAA, where he'll probably have to make, what, four or five starts before he gets back to where he can be to start a game for the Yankees. So, you know, right now we're probably looking at a May or June return for Garrett Cole. Of course, it's a long time, and the Yankees, you know, have a lot of winning to do in between then and without him. So we'll see how that goes. But, you know, Ryan, how are you feeling? I'm sure some of the anxiety has lifted. Of course, we're not out of the woods just yet, but we're getting closer to seeing a highway where we can hitchhike back to civilization. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I was telling you this before we recorded. I've been recording every single episode with just this incredible ball of anxiety regarding what's going on with Garrett Cole. And I feel like every Yankee fan has that shared experience right now of, okay, he's not, like, th th there's no initial sign of a tear. And I'm not saying that's confirmed. Uh, obviously, they'll have to do further testing and we'll uh, see. You know, the, the doctor he is going on to see in L.A. is a very high profile surgeon. He, you know, works with he worked with Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, has done work on Tom Brady, uh, Shohei Otani. We're talking, you know, some of the biggest athletes to ever play this, uh, you know, ever play in, not just North American sports, but in sports in general. So that's, you know, Cole's going out and seeing the best of the best. Brandon Cody, the wording of his tweet would lead me to believe that it's something that Cole was seeking out, which makes sense. Garrett Cole should be looking uh, to get as many answers as he can um, regarding any potential tear, regarding any potential just damage, right? Because we all understand the implications of Garrett Cole getting, having that injury be worse. You don't want it to worsen. You don't want it to, uh, his elbow to degrade or anything of the sort. Look, we're not medical experts. And obviously, you know, you anticipate that there's inflammation. You anticipate that there's uh, swelling and that that stuff will have to go down. Um, but right now, Alex, um, if you're a Yankee fan, it's not good news that Garrett Cole's hurt. Don't get me wrong. The team is worse without Garrett Cole for one to two months. But the outcome that we've been kind of holding our breath on was that the Yankees were withholding information about a potential tear. And that's not the case. This is an Aaron Boone saying, yeah, you know, we're doing more testing, but I think he's fine. It's it's multiple sources, multiple reports, multiple people close to the team, close to the organization, people that don't want to lie about this because they don't want to get it wrong. So, uh, you know, I think that's an important thing to point out. The Yankees are not going to announce anything. Aaron Boone uh, was very much like he didn't talk about the, the situation. They won't talk about it until they get an official prognosis, but... It's inflammation, it's swelling, it's nothing regarding a tear. And I think that's the biggest thing, Alex. No tear. I mean, honestly, I mean, I could run around the streets yelling no tear right now. That's that's how giddy I am about the fact that there's no tear in that UCL. That's season, this was a season-defining MRI. And for now, we can go, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, I think the best news that we can come away from right now, this very moment is that when we fast forward to October, Garrett Cole's going to be starting a playoff game for us, right? That's all I care about. Get to the playoffs. Garrett Cole will be ready because um, he'll have three, four months to ramp up in between then. He'll be midseason form uh, by that time. So I do think that this is what I would call really good case scenario. I wouldn't say best case scenario because we're still not out of the woods just yet. He's still getting more testing. But we're in good case scenario, which is – He's going to be back this season, um, and that's all I really care about because right now, I, we just couldn't afford Tommy John. Like that, I, I just, he, there was no sharp pain. His strength results came back good. I don't think there was any reason to believe he had a torn UCL. All the doctors, all the MRIs and imaging suggest he's not have a torn ACL. There is inflammation and there is discomfort and soreness. So you shut him down. Like shut the freaking guy down for the next two months. I don't give a crap. Uh, but keep him healthy. Make sure he's good to go. Make sure he's 100% ready to ramp up in the minor leagues um, and go through his program. The only thing that concerns me is kind of how this operated last year with Carlos Rodon in the sense that like he had that left forearm strain, then it kind of got worse, and then it like – he had some issues coming back, and then he had another injury. But the thing is, like, Garrett Cole, 
he is not injury prone. So like he's not gonna pick up a hamstring injury. He's not gonna pick up this. He's not he's very careful with all this, almost meticulous in a way. So I think that I trust he will bounce back and return to full strength this season. Really, really happy about that. Um, of course, now let's talk about the discussions revolving Dylan Cease. Apparently, before all this went down, the Yankees had discussed players like Will Warren, Chase Hampton, Everson Pereira, uh, Clayton Beater in talks about Dylan Cease. And, you know, the consensus right now is that the Rangers and Yankees are two teams that are engaged and, and maybe even the Padres too. So, Ryan, how are you feeling right now about is this an opportunity where the Yankees say, let's, you know what, let's script, go get Dylan Cease, give away some capital from our minor league system, and then we'll get Garrett Cole back at one point, and then we'll be ready to go for the postseason. That's something you think like is a possibility, especially if they're willing to leave Spencer Jones out of a deal. Yeah, so Andy Martino said it's not likely that they end up with Dylan Cease. And I, I just, I, I would say he's a Texas Ranger. So, you know, I, I would just put that out there. I think he's going to end up with the Texas Rangers. I'm pretty confident in saying that. I've seen a lot of conversations about it. Um, a couple of people I follow on White Sox Twitter, uh, notably a good friend of mine, Not Cease, who's probably the biggest Dylan Cease fan I know, uh, had gotten word of, you know, Spencer uh, Sebastian Wil- Walcott, which is a pretty intriguing prospect the Rangers organization, being potentially evolved in a package for Dylan Cease. And, considering uh, the Rangers' aggression, considering that Ken Rosenthal said in that article he released yesterday that he was told that a deal was about to happen before it was walked back into they're just talking. So I would believe they've had some pretty intensive conversations. For that reason, I, I, I am to believe that it is a Texas Ranger. I feel like the Yankees' package being leaked, um, you know, stuff of that nature, it kind of feels like we're the Blue Jays and the Rangers are the Yankees of this Juan Soto fiasco, if you kind of get what I'm saying, right? We're in it. But not really. We're not. We're not really. In it, if that. If that makes any sense. We've inquired. We've definitely talked. I mean, you have to inquire. You have to talk. Um, from my understanding, the any offers the Yankees made uh, were not very like recent to the point where it's like yesterday. It was not because of the Garrett Cole injury. In fact, I. I it's possible that that was before this even happened. So, um, you know, I'm not one to believe that they're going to trade for Garrett uh, for Blake Snell. Uh, Blake Snell. Dylan Cease. I don't think they're going to sign Blake Snell. I don't think they're going to sign Jordan Montgomery. Um, and then the last thing I want to throw out there is, you know, they're going to stay internal. That's, that's, I think that's the right course of action if they're not going out for one of the top guys. We talked about Michael Lorenzen. Um, for a lack of better words, he's just not good enough. He's just not. Like, he doesn't, there's nothing interesting about the repertoire. Like, we're not talking about, like, um, a Frankie Montas where it's like, yeah, he was awful, but he was hurt and the stuff is good. Or even, like, a Luis Severino where it's like, he was awful, but the stuff is interesting and he could be good. There's nothing interesting about Lorenzen's arsenal. He is just flat out not that good. He doesn't induce a lot of strikeouts. So, Alex, again, I, Michael Lorenzen, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. I don't mean to I don't mean to be disparaging. I just don't think the guy's suitable for what I want in my rotation. And as for what the Yankees should do... Look, Luke Weaver was signed to be a depth starter, but he wasn't signed to be a regular part of this rotation for two months. Cody Poteet was not signed to be a regular part of this rotation for two months. Will Warren should be their fifth starter. We heard, like, that package for Dylan Cease was what? Hampton, Warren, Peraza, Pereira, Beater? If you're not, if you're hung up on trading your pitching depth, I want to see them. I want to see Will Warren. If you're not trading Will Warren, that's fine. I would. That's an evaluation I can agree with. I am going to, I want to see him. I don't want to see Luke Weaver for two months. I don't want to see Cody Poteet for two months. Let me see this 24-year-old who's been ranked on, on the various top 100 lists on ESPN, on, uh, I think, not Prospects Live. I think there was another one that ranked him uh, in their top 100. Alex, I want to see him. I want to see him. I want to see him pitch. I want to see him at the major league level. Worst case scenario, you send him down. Oh no, you're starting a service clock. Who cares? Respectfully, like, who cares about the service clock? You're trying to win the World Series, and I think Will Warren gives you a better chance of winning ball games. And Alex, imagine that world where you develop and you find, you know, you find a good thing in a bad situation. You make the most of a bad circumstance. There's nothing you're gonna find in Luke Weaver, respectfully, that's gonna indicate a long-term piece of this rotation. Will Warren? I mean, Alex, could you imagine if Will Warren becomes something? Not a great starter, but just a good one, and you're like, okay. We've got something here. When someone goes down again and maybe Cole comes back, you just slot Cole in the rotation and somebody, you know, has to step out. I don't know. I want to know that I have good starting pitching. I think Warren gives you the best chance of that, and I want to win games. This is not a matter of prospect hugging. I think prospects are better than veterans. None of that crap. What this is is that I think Will Warren gives you the best chance to win, and I think the Yankees need to do everything they can to put themselves in a position to win baseball games. This is a must-win year. You must win go to the postseason. At the very least, you must get there. Juan Soto is guaranteed for one year. Screw the service time. Screw roster manipulation. Screw rookie eligibility. 
I, I don't want to hear any talk of any of that. What I want to hear is that the Yankees are putting their best starter out there, and I'm sorry, I'm just not going to buy it if it's Weaver or Poteet. And I like those two guys, but I'm not going to buy it, Alex. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, clearly we need a lot more um, if, if, you know, there was an opportunity, a situation where Cole is going to miss a lot of time, but I think he is going to miss at least one to two months as is being reported. We're going to get more information as he goes to L.A. and figures out the severity of this, and, you know, eventually we'll get all the information. Uh, but for now, we continue to remain cautiously optimistic about this situation. And, of course, guys, always happy to hear your thoughts down below in the YouTube comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.